Okay. You look okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to offer you my top 10 tips for a successful interview. Uh, this will be on your final, so this would be a good thing to uh, pay attention to. And if you need to come back to it, uh, I am going to post this video, so you, you'll, have, you'll have it, okay? Um, and someone will feel counterintuitive and um, weird. Um, so just roll with the weirdness of me as a professor, okay? Go with it. First uh, tip for a successful interview is study the company, okay? I, I understand that uh, Danny worked at Sonic and Dollar General. That's not something he had to study the company for. He just wanted whatever he wanted. Gas money, insurance money, whatever. It wasn't a big deal. He wasn't planning to spend his life there. He just needed a job. Right, I'm talking about that. Uh, you come through college, you get your degree, and uh, a company is hiring Different companies handle their business differently. How many of you have found RateMyProfessor.com? Yeah. Okay. Similar websites for companies. Study the company. What are they about? Do they have a good, uh, like, user approval rating for employees? Right? That's available online today. You can find that out. You know, read their mission statement. Look at their website. Find out what is this company about? Do I want to work for them? Because if you take a job with the wrong company, if you take a job that's not right for you, it will suck the marrow out of your bones. There is nothing worse for your mental health than doing something you don't believe in, for a company you think is trash, and working for people that have no integrity you think. It's terrible. So study the company. Make sure you know. Number two, know your resume. Dylan, what's on your resume right now, sir? Currently nothing. Perfect. That's important to know, right? There's no sense, you know, trying to put up a false facade about that, Dylan. It is what it is, right? There's nothing on there. Daniel's got Dollar General and Sonic. Brianna, what you got on your resume? Anything? Oh, cash saver, the grocery store, and the um, cash saver and Subway. Subway. Do you have a question? Yes. Um, how valuable? Like I know we've been talking about um, like previous experience. Yes. How valuable is like self-proclaimed experience? Like, like saying like I am self-sufficient in the knowledge of hardware because I have done my own research. Sure. My own you know, like not yeah. exactly words like that where they're like, eh, I don't know. I think there are a couple sections of a resume that are really important. One is a skills section, and I think it handles that. I think yeah. um, I think it's perfectly viable to go, um, I just really love software, and I, I have, you know, really perfected something. Um, don't put you have skills in Word, PowerPoint, and whatever. Everyone has that, so don't put it. If you don't, we'd be scared. James. What if you have the certificates? I, okay, that's fine. I, I'm not sure, again, honestly, everyone who has been through school has probably had that. I'm not saying don't. I'm just saying I don't know how much value added it is. Now, to more to your point, if you have something more technical, uh, like you're really good at Photoshop or InDesign, like you really... You're an artist, and you're really familiar with um, uh, the Adobe set, the Adobe Suite. I, valuable. Uh, maybe you messed around with some CAD programming or something, right? I think you know, and you're familiar with AutoCAD or something. Okay. Um, maybe your dad was a welder, and you learned how to weld. Uh, okay, right? I think those are all skills. I think they can go in there. Um, I think the other thing where you can put that is in your objective sentence, which I'm going to talk about as we go through this process. But I think your objective sentence matters. Yeah. Don't say something lame like, even if it's true, don't say something lame like, I really want a job to pay my bills. Sure, everybody does. What are you really going for? James, I've been, I've been after you about coming to school here and being a theater major because I want to know what you really want to do. I heard you do a pretty eloquent presentation on makeup you seem to really like it okay that needs to be in the objective what are you really going for right what are you really after 
I mean, obviously we all want a job and we want to pay our bills, right? I mean, that's clear. I mean, sure. But what are you going for? I think that could be in the objective statement that, that you incorporate something like that. I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a self-paced learner. I've, I've worked on the line. I'd like to bring that. Okay, I think that's fair. But I think you ought to know your resume and just be honest about it. Human resources people are paid to ask questions. For instance, if, if uh, Brianna, um, let's say she gets her degree, she goes to be a therapist, then she takes the time off, uh, maybe she gets burned out, maybe she has a child, maybe she, you know, who knows. That HR person, you may guarantee yourself, is going to ask you why there's a gap there, right? Um, in, in a recent set of interviews here, uh, two people snuck through uh, to the Zoom level of interview who were unemployed and I didn't catch it. And they didn't have a good answer for why they had this gap in employment. Okay, That's bad. That's a bad deal. Know your resume, right? Be ready. If you took some time off for whatever reason, that's going to be there and you need to know it. If you took a major, if, 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 if everything up to this point, Dylan, was... Um, I don't know, uh, gaming driven, and suddenly you make a major right turn to, you want to be a teacher or something, right? You need to be ready to answer the question, why are you making this major turn, right? You need to know that. So know your resume, that's number two. Number three, I know, some of you can go, you're crazy. No one else teaches this but me. Typically, interviews come in seasons. Right? You'll have been at a job for a while, and then you go, ah, I'm not feeling it, and you'll go through a series of application interview process. Right? You might have four or five. You might have more. Who knows? Carry an emergency interview kit in your car. What needs to be in that is completely up to you. I have a few suggestions. A tied pen or the equivalent thereof. A tied pen? Oh, the, the, the little, yes, exactly. So that if Daniel went to uh, Olive Garden for lunch and had spaghetti and meatballs and he gets a huge dollop right here, but he's got an interview in an hour, he and the interview, the person doing the interview, are going to, right, right here. That's going to be in your head. Carry something that will handle that. You know what it is. If you have a fidget spinner or whatever, uh, you know, thing it is that you handle with anxiety, you know, that helps you handle anxiety, put that in the kit. An extra one. Because maybe you forgot yours. Some of you can't live without lip balm. Or whatever. Lotion. Keep extra, right? You, whatever that thing is that you know it's going to stress you out. Brianna, you know. I don't even know what it is, but you got it. What is it that could keep extra of it? And maybe an extra shirt or pants or, or blouse or dress or something in the car dur just during that season, right? Just when you might need it. So that when you get in there, um, you're not worried about the fact that your lips are super dry um, or that you got spaghetti and meatballs or whatever it may be. I know. But here's, I, I'm telling you this for this reason. Because if you don't do what I say, and you get out on an interview, and you didn't follow this, I hope you hear my voice reverberate, reverberating in your brain that said, I told you, Daniel. I told you you ought to have an emergency interview kit, right? I know, kind of silly, but it could be important. Number four, study the job description. HR people are famous for asking this question. James, uh, what did you notice on the job description that you fit uh, matches your skills? If you don't know that job description really well, your answer is trash, right? If you meant to read it, you really did, but you did this other thing. They are looking for that when you get in there. Know the job description. Know why you think you're a good match for the job. Specific examples. Number five, build rapport. Um, if you walk in, are you a Razorback fan? I don't know, maybe you don't care. Anybody a Razorback fan? Nobody cares. Okay, cool. Uh, choose a different example, Ryan. Um, 
James, do you have a favorite brand of makeup for this stuff? Ben Nye. Ben Nye. Yeah, I didn't know if you use Ben Nye or Marin. Uh, so if you go in and you're interviewing for this uh, special effects job and, and there's a picture of the HR person with Ben Nye behind you, go ahead and sing. That's awesome, right? Because you're building rapport. If you see something there, if, if the something comes up in the interview where you think, oh, this person and I have possible rapport here, you want them to remember you, right? Yeah, go ahead. Rapport would be um, something you have in common, relationship, something maybe they're interested in and you're interested in, um, maybe an experience you've had with their company that was positive, um, you know, that builds rapport. Something like that. Yeah, a professional connection or a personal connection, Daniel. You want them to remember you at the end of the day. Ah, Dylan was that guy that wore the Star Wars shirt when he came in. And maybe the HR person asks you about it. You have a little conversation about it. Like, if you had that conversation with me, I'm going to tell you that Star Wars, A New Hope, is the first movie that I saw in the movie theater when I'm eight years old. So anytime I see somebody with Star Wars stuff up, that's what it brings up. Okay, there is room there now for us to discuss and be people, right? To be real as opposed to just showing up and going, I'm really good at putting words on paper, whatever. Number six, make eye contact. Do not bring your phone. Leave it in the car. Make eye contact. Just look up. No, that's the same one. They go together. Because if you have your phone, your tendency would be to look down at your phone, you know, uh, ad nauseum, do not do it. Brianna, you're going into a room, there's a human resources person you've never met before. What are you most likely to do in that situation? How will you react? Oh, I'd be nervous. But I would introduce myself first. You would introduce yourself? You'd yeah. be nervous? Would you look down? Yeah. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> okay. Right? Look up. Also, don't do that. No. No. Number seven is body language. Cross your, crossing your arms looks like you're trying to be hard. Don't do it. Closes the body language. Lean in, don't lean back. Right? This is not the time, you know, to kick back. It makes you look like you're not that interested. Think about your body language. What are you saying to the person with your body? It may help, Brianna, to think about that because that gives you something really tangible to be focused on and not your nerves, right? Like uh, you can be intentionally thinking, okay, well, what am I doing in my body? And that gives you something to focus on rather than like, uh, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous, right? Number eight, um, this one is, uh, seven? seven was body language, six was make eye contact. Eight is, if you get your foot in the door and you actually get face to face with somebody, bring, show, and tell, okay? Bring some concrete examples. There was something that was hard for you to put in a resume. If you were employee of the month, bring that certificate uh, and I'd be ready to tell the story of why you were awarded that that month. Um, if you go in my office, you'll find uh, a couple of uh, trophies, I guess you say, that I've been given here. Um, the two that matter most to me uh, were awarded by the student body or student government. And if I was going to an interview, I'd carry those with me, or one of them at least, because that matters to me. It, it, it matters that the students chose me as someone uh, that inspired them, right? Like that matters. It's value added. That's a specific, concrete example that maybe you listed on paper. It's different to be sitting there holding it, right? Uh, if you're an artist or somebody in the arts, it's an opportunity to bring more tangible versions of whatever you put digitally. Don't waste it. Don't squander it. Bring something more than what was in the resume, right? Something value added. Show and tell. Go back to kindergarten. Whatever it is, I'm not sure it matters. 
does a couple things, no matter what. It shows you it's prepared and ready. That didn't get there by accident. Whatever it is, no matter how small it is, it didn't get there by accident. You put thought and consideration, absolutely. You were ready for this interview. That may help, even if you're looking nervous at the moment because it's your first major interview. But look what I did even in that situation, right? Number nine, be yourself. This is not the time to try and act like you are something you are not. Uh, you can say you're going in for an interview and your perception is they like this kind of person, which is not really you, but you're going to try and be that. One, you come off looking fake. Not good. Number two, you can't deliver the goods because you're not that person. And if you get hired and you come in and you describe yourself as this super organized person um, and, you, and you're a hot mess, how's that going to help when you get on the job, right? Because you're still going to be a hot mess. You may work really hard for three days to be super organized, but it's not going to keep, right? Be yourself. Um, some of you uh, don't respond well to constructive criticism. You might as well be honest about it. I, I prefer to be left alone and do what I do. Um, I don't like to be coached up. Okay, be honest about it. I mean, I'm not saying you say the worst thing you can possibly think about yourself, but uh, you know, present an honest picture of yourself. Okay, number 10, last one. Uh, follow up quickly. If they gave you an email address and your um, interview says at 10 o'clock in the morning, like this class is. You know, two or three o'clock this afternoon, send them an email, thank them for the interview. Maybe you remind them if there was rapport built, maybe you remind them uh, it was really delightful to talk to you about Star Wars so that they put that story back with the person sending the email. Because if, if you're an HR person, you may have done nothing but interviews all day long. Um, we have. It, it, it's hard to remember exactly, but if you put if you tie that story back to Daniel, oh yeah, that that guy, absolutely. You put the positive back in, follow up quickly. Now here's what you can't do: you can't email 24 times in a 24-hour period, right? Yeah. I would put in the email if they said, Dylan, you'll hear back from us within a week. I then I I look forward to hearing back from you on whatever that date is, and then you might ask, would it be okay if I if I follow up, you know, at that point, or you may just say, uh, if I haven't heard from you, I'll follow up at that point, right? You want them to know you want it, and you want to not look needy kind of all at the same time, okay? Any other questions on those 10? Okay. I don't think it's an exhaustive list, but hopefully it's a helpful list, so.